Good evening, good evening, good evening. All I see are the beautiful people who've logged in for this session. My name is Mayang Chang, and on behalf of Audi India, I heartily welcome you to the final session of the Visionarium 2020. I hope you're all locked in, ready to enjoy this session. Feel free to take screenshots, take pictures, tag us, Audi India, and use the hashtag Audi Visionarium, Visionarium 2020 on social media. Let us know what you think. The goal of the Audi Visionarium was to help all of us to get a clearer picture of what lies ahead. In the last four days, we've had some interesting conversations with four visionaries whose opinions have definitely made our own vision of the future clearer and sharper. Virat Kohli helped us understand the importance of fitness, both physical and mental. Chef Sanjeev Kapoor planted this idea in our heads of being conscious about where the food on our plate was coming from. Shankar Mahadevan first wowed us with his insights into the future of music and then thrilled us with an amazing performance. And yesterday, we had the inimitable Baman Irani with us. We spoke about the importance of art in our lives and how it helps to shape the way we see the world around us. I hope these conversations have helped you and me appreciate how important the things around us are, the things that we tend to take for granted. The, food, the words that we read, the music that we listen to, and the fitness of our own body. All of them play a big part in making us who we are and who we can be. But this conversation, about the future cannot be complete without an understanding of how the things that give us pleasure will change in the days to come. That perfectly cut suit, that exquisitely crafted lehenga, the deep plush carpet, or a minimalist yet chic handbag. Some objects are not just things that we own, they are part of a personality. They have an extraordinary influence on how people see us and how we perceive ourselves. And I can think of no one better than our next guest to enlighten us about the future of luxury. He brings the glamour to the red carpet, the style to the most stylish of films, and is a connoisseur of the arts and crafts in India. Joining us today to talk about the codes of luxury in the final session of Visionarium 2020, none other than Manish Malhotra. Welcome, Manish. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you, Manish? I'm very good after a long time, huh? Yes, it has been a couple of years easily. In a couple of years, but you look the same. Well, I was actually about to say the same, but you've just stolen my thunder. So before you say anything else, before we get to the <laughs> serious stuff, I have to say this, Manish. It's as if not a day has gone by since we last met, which was a couple of years ago. Do you want to share the secret of your youth? Because I, uh, from what we know that you just celebrated what your 35th birthday last week? Oh, how I wish it was my 35th, but it was my 54th birthday. And um, yeah, just wow. getting older, but feeling younger and feeling good. Yeah, that is great. So, uh, welcome to Visionarium 2020. And also, you. congratulations, your label has just completed 15 years. That's right. It's been um, a long journey of 30 years in the business of clothes, fashion, styling, movies, and it's 15 years to my label. So. And before there was five years of modeling, so I've been working for 35 years. Wow. See, that's what I said. You've been doing this since you were a child. <laughs> that's how, 35, 35th yeah. birthday. You know, the thing is, as a child, I was so fascinated with cinema. My entire bachpan is in, is in film theater. Mm -hmm. Why that? Watching every heroine, costume, songs, music, all of it, right? And observing it and all of that. So I feel I've been at work from the age of five. Because from then to now, mm -hmm. my love for cinema and films continues. So it's this long, everlasting affair. Wow. And we are mm -hmm. so glad for this one because your name, your work, your repertoire is synonymous with uh, a lot of style, a lot of luxury. Well, speaking about luxury, uh, it means different things to different people, right? Some people say that luxury is probably just having an extra room where they can uh, entertain their hobbies. For some people, it's about possessing the best of brands, the most expensive of brands. What does luxury mean to you, Manish? Well, I'll tell you something that one very interesting fact that it, uh, what the lockdown has bought, um, uh, has made us all think and realize is that luxury is redefined. 
luxury is definitely time with mm-hmm. yourself luxury is definitely valuing everything that you have from life uh, to your friends relatives to your home to every being that's around you you know so the fact of being is is the true form of luxury of course you can you can have a wider definition of saying that i want materialistic things i want money i want the best cars i want all of it for me that's great of course it's important it's important for you to feel good and if you feel good mm-hmm. getting something that you want whether it's a whether it's a, a materialistic a thing whether it is some knowledge whether it is something that you want some place that you want to visit so so be it and that is luxury for you so i think luxury is yeah. truly doing something that you enjoy don't shy away from well it's also a state of mind as you said if it's redefined it's not just owning the best of things or having a luxurious villa or the car or the clothes it's a state of mind and it can definitely improve your mental well-being but if you want to go and you know uh, get a luxury villa go do it because i think that what we've all come to realize by the end of 2020 is that if you want to do something go ahead and do it and i think that change is is going to be a phenomenal change that we will see in the future where people are not going to shy away from living their life and doing things that they want to and um, without explaining anything i mean you know really being true to yourself Well these are the changes that we can expect in the future but if we start going into the past you've been <clears throat> working since the last 35 years as you said and even before that for example but uh, trends come and go and then they come back again what are the how has the perception of luxury and glamour changed over time according to you Well I I think that um the it's widened the knowledge has widened i mean today the world is so much more closer because thanks to social media so all of us know so much more you know and i think that um, luxury today is redefined in many different verticals and and um, i would say departments so there are lots and lots more of style and and knowledge and um, and all of that knowledge that everybody has so today when you see that when people are so knowledge about about what all is happening they just know everything they know that okay this is something that i want to google it and you know okay this is the place i want to visit this is the trend that i want to follow this is the uh, uh, bag or a shirt that i want to purchase so i think that there's a lot of knowledge that one has to be and that's a huge change mm-hmm. because we, it's not people know so much better people are questioning quality um people are aware of quality and uh, and i think people want their lives to be much better and live their lives the way they are so i think the entire day and every day we are redefining trend and fashion and luxury and all of it well in the last couple of sessions of the visionarium 2020 uh, baman and uh, chef sanjeev kapoor had also spoken about this what you just said that everything is at the click of a button or at uh, the tip of your <laughs> finger uh with the access easy access to the internet with social media with the access to millions of people out there some young talent is taking over from all over the country you know uh in different fields somebody's done it in music somebody's done it in their cooking do you think something like this is also happening in fashion i think young talent coming in is so amazing the entire energy changes the um in- entire conversation and for even people like us who are in the business for a long time it pushes us to think different mm-hmm. and fashion is a huge huge platform um for youth for the youth to come up with completely different um mindsets and from different storytelling um, so earlier it was all about clothes right but today there's so many so many departments yeah. whether it's um <clears throat> customized suits and bespoke suits whether it is bags whether it's jewelry uh whether it's just t-shirts whether it's just shirts whether it's sneakers there are so many verticals of fashion and style that um youngsters are taking on and you know they have different things to say and different interpretations different storytelling like for example people are painting mm-hmm. today uh people are doing different art forms product design oh my god it's just like an endless sea out there of um various things and i think that today innovation is key and it's so so exciting to see the young mind and um and the you know the collaborations that young and the older brands are having together i mean you're seeing it internationally all the 
big brands today are collaborating with mm -hmm. young minds and i think that that just speaks for the 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 kind of cohesiveness or the entire uh, pairing of the older and the younger the wisdom the experience with the young mind coming together and it's going to be an amazing future and an absolutely different um, future which we're going to see very soon soon i think from 2021 where fashion is concerned all said and done probably innovation is the one thing that will never go out of fashion isn't it i agree i i don't think so i think and you know what what the beauty here is that it's not just in fashion i think all over whether you see movies whether you see food i mean mm. look how stylized has food gone you know and and i mean Absolutely, two yes. years ago not many people even i probably didn't know what truffle is i didn't you know i actually asked what's <laughs> truffle because i'm not so knowledgeable with so many food because i'm quite basic with my food you know i, I love chinese and i love indian and um, and today it, it's like everybody knows you know what uh, gluten free is or what truffle is or what you know uh, it's so much knowledge and and i think what is quite amazing with fashion is that it's collaborating with not only um, it's, there's makeup and there's lifestyle there's food the collaborations are being so interesting you know and and that pushed us to in fact last year just before the lockdown we collaborated with yao chao and we came out with a complete dessert uh -huh. platter co-designed which is something I never thought would happen or I would do. Yeah, you know? actually, and I, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't come to mind. Yeah, so it's it's like that. So that's what the, the young is is pushing people like us who've been in the business to also think different and to think of interesting different collaborations. So I think that the style uh, part of it, whether it's clothes, whether it's food, whether it's lifestyle, is completely out there today, and people are not shying away from it, which is so beautiful. I mean, the entire last three days. Sorry, the last three days. Sorry, go ahead. Last three years, I've been hearing of people wanting to go to Goa and pick up beautiful villas with pools and gardens, and you know, spend some time there out with nature, but also live it up. And I think it's so beautiful for people to venture and not shy away and do things that they want to. So it's luxury and lifestyle, right? Because you're going out there living with nature you want to do that so that's luxury and that's style too it's not just a reserve for special occasions it would seem that now with especially with this year we are beginning to realize that it can be a way of life absolutely which is which is fabulous it is it is thank god for that but uh manish uh, i'm going to Put, it, put this out here. You'll have to fill in the blanks for me. Okay, this is about quote unquote. About everyday luxury, Jackie Kennedy once said, pearls are always appropriate. Elizabeth Taylor said, big girls need big diamonds. What does Manish Malhotra say? Fill in the blanks. I think what Manish Malhotra says now is, guys, go out there and lead a glamorous life. And glamorous, glamour redefined. Because glamour, you know, mm -hmm. for all of us, you know, glamour was like out there, it was bling, it was shimmer, which is something I absolutely love and own up to. But um, today, I think it's go out there and live it up, girls, whether it is, you know, whether from sexuality to clothes to your thought processes to what you want to do in life to where you want to live. So I think today I would say just go and live out there, you know, that should be your best friend. Life. Now that, yes, that that should be your best friend. That is so well said. Everybody out there, listen to these words very carefully. Life is your best friend, and you have to live it up at any which way which you like. Well, <clears throat> Carl Lagerfeld said that luxury is the ease of a t-shirt in a very expensive dress. Now that's a very very interesting quote right there, Manish. Now that you also have a different view of how things are done, all of us do uh, in 2020. What do you think is more important? How a dress looks or how it feels? I think a bit of both. Because if the dress mm -hmm. feels good, it will look good. If you don't feel good in it or if the dress doesn't feel good on you, you're not going to look good. So I think they both mm. are parallels, you know. So for me, I think they both are important. Okay. Well, uh, you've also uh, said that you've worked with so many hundreds of artisans. Uh, they are specializing mm -hmm. in various Indian crafts. Uh, 
going forward or even now presently do you think that enough is being done to preserve this part of a heritage and can we do more for them well i think a lot is being done <clears throat> there has been a lot of more mm -hmm. conversation on all of this in the past couple of uh, couple of few years but i think that uh, a lot lot more can be done i've been working with kashmir artisans for the past 10 years then we run an ngo called mishwa in in small town in called mishwa which is beautiful small town and uh, that is something that shavana asmi started with namrita goel and i joined them 10 years ago and we also work a lot in banaras one of my most favorite places and i think that um, there's a lot lot more that can be done for sure and especially when we been speaking about various um, you know various um, young people coming in and embracing our uh, handloom and all our you know all our artisans and all of that i think a lot more can be done because when you take something which is woven and something which is from a heritage and change it around and present it in an interesting dress or or in a day to day wear or something that the youth can adapt to or identify with mm -hmm. it gets even more interesting but i am seeing that change you know i am seeing that change my young that i see a lot of the brides who come to you also for one day want to wear a handloom silk sari want to go completely traditional and there's a certain there's a certain uh, pride in that now you know and i'm seeing that change and um for me i think supporting all of it is, is really what every designer who especially has been in the business for some time should take on i mean whether in my lockdown whether it's, it was my my people who work with me whether my embroiders or tailors or my assistants uh who, my work family it was very it was very important to me that they are fine and because they are the people i'm going to mm -hmm. keep working with and now it's been what it's one it's already been about 3 to 4 months we have been working and it in and, um, and things are changing and i just hope they get they just get better and better so i think that it it is there there is a certain um, there's a certain acknowledgement and there's a certain appreciation today for all our artisans and all of it but i think there's a lot more that can be done and i'm just hoping as things get back to normal a lot more younger designers take this on and come up with lots more comments that you know the young can adapt a lot more can be done uh, in the lot more manish do you think that uh, probably like of course you're working towards is the customers the end uh, clients they're also becoming more aware of uh, what it should be but do you think that probably it could also help if our artisans were convinced to see that these traditional arts can be adapted in a new way as you said they are uh, because sometimes you can get very up ard sakte ho kisi baat pe ki no i think this is how it was done this is how it should be done is convincing the artisans also a big part of bringing about that change but i think we samajh to rahe because you know we always feel ke wo samajhte nahi but i think there was samajh rahe mm -hmm. because they kind of wo kyunki unko bhi to ek zarurat hai right they also need it and yes. and i think when i meet yes. them and when i speak with them and i i see that they are also very keen and very eager and today everybody has a phone they're so much they're so aware I, i'll tell you something i was in banaras but say a year and a half ago and um सुमन मई मन में वीवर शोज में की यू नो ये आपने जो फैब्रिक लेके गए थे आपने ये ये कलेक्शन बनाया और कटरीना कैफ ने पहना था फैशन शो पे आई नो दैट्स सो दे फील सो प्राउड इन फैक्ट इवन व्हेन ऑल आर मिजवा गर्ल्स यू नो हु डू द चेक इन इन मिजवा व्हेन दे सी ऑल द वी डू ऑलवेज डू अ फैशन शो एवरी ईयर व्हेन मॉडल्स एंड एक्टर्स वर्क दे फील सो प्राउड तो एक नॉलेज आज सबको है एंड टुडे थैंक्स टू सोशल मीडिया दे आर सो मच मोर अवेयर एंड दे आल्सो वांट टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ द एंटायर um you know the entire family of um, you know fashion and the fashion industry so i think they are they are also accommodating and changing with time for sure oh that is so good to hear as you said innovation and partnership between the traditional and the modern and the futuristic that is what is going to take the entire industry and the style and the crafts forward now you know mayang i i'm sorry but it's up to you Yes, uh, please, uh, I, yes, please. Yes, please. I mentioned you just one thought that I had was I think that not only just fashion for any industry to go if you see movies or any industry partnership and collaboration with the young with the youth with new or fresher minds that is just a, a complete must and a complete uh, what should I say the truth of any kind of expansion in the base of an expansion so that has to happen. <laughs> And I mean, the creative art is so, so much. So sorry, I get so passionate when I'm speaking, and then I'm like, you know, I have to say all these things, and I say yes, I will say them, and you know. So please, sorry, please, you should. 
you, you should. I have absolutely no problems if you do because it's I more about what you think and what about these know. topics. They are too close to my heart. So. <laughs> Well, I hope that people see your passion as well. That is so, so beautiful. Uh, well, talking about this passion, talking about creative work, it is about so much imagination. And uh, when we come to the other aspect, as you were saying, movies, right? And so many other fields. Now, a lot of futuristic movies, a lot of sci-fi films that we see the of the distant future. Um, the imagining of fashion in that has been mostly very minimalist with sleek lines and neutral colors. Do you agree with that, that this is how the future is going to be? Or do you believe that integrated craftsmanship will still be very popular? Whenever, 20 years, 40 years, 100 years from now? Well, I think everything will coexist, right? <clears throat> like I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a great fan of nostalgia. <clears throat> I love black and white films. And all Aren't that. we all? <laughs> yeah, recently in, in the lockdown, I've been, thanks to social media again and, you know, you, you see so many of the black and white uh, movies and black and white pictures or, or you know, your behind the scene pictures um, and you mm -hmm. see the fashion, you see, the, you see their faces of the people, you see those moments and uh, th then also a lot of facts that keep coming up, you know. So I think what we are doing today will be also revered, revered and looked up to much later. But I think going by the future when things will be super fast and super mechanical and minimalist in all of it, there will be a certain respect and a certain regard for a lot more, you know, intimate, woven. When I say woven, mm -hmm. I mean woven in motion, story, everything. So I think both, both will, both will be around. Like something that is so intimate can never go out, never ever. What do you feel? What do you feel is the most intimate form of fashion or an era of fashion? For you, if you were to go to back into the past, I love the fifties. I love the fifties. Fifties. Mm -hmm. I love that entire changing time of Indian fashion, very influenced by uh, the European countries, but yet keeping. Uh, you know, so you you had the keeping the like a sari. There's a blouse with a lace bow. You know, like a lace tie up, and uh -huh. the men wearing with a very fitted blazer. So that that entire changing time of the 50s and then the 60s, which was very, very beautiful, very precise, very, um, you know, uh, stunning. And, um, and you know what I liked about the 60s was that everything was very neat and clean, very in place, you know. I'm a huge fan of the 50s and 60s, huge fan. I mean, even all the film stars, I mean, see a Deva Nancy, Raj Kapoor, um, you know, see that. And you know, what was amazing that time, was when it was not just the way they looked or the what they wore the people it was also mm -hmm. their work what they spoke what they, uh, they you know they were so true to themselves and to their belief and i think that i have tremendous respect for and i think what you think what you say what you wear it all for me is a package it's not different when you wear something really great but you're not speaking that language or not thinking that way mm. it, it just you can make a this is just bought this is not you. But I think at that time, what people spoke, the way people carried themselves, they wore their personality on their sleeve. And to me, that is just, just something that I'm, I'm an awestruck with. I'm completely, I love it. I love the 50s. Like the whole 40s. <laughs> and I can 60s. absolutely see that. Yeah. <laughs> No, that was a phase that was uh, like how we call it. Sometimes we also call it yeah. the golden period. And yeah. I can completely stunning. see your passion, the way you speak about it. I love the style of it. Well, uh, again, styles, fashion, trends, they will all come and go. But uh, something that has been happening in the last, let's say, five to 10 years with obviously with the access, with internet, with everything. And this is pre-2020, right? Uh, fast fashion has been quite the rage. Ki pick up something, everything's become obviously the economy is opened up even more or had opened up, not right now. Currently, the economy is not in a very great state. But people were buying clothes. Everything was so much more affordable. We had a huge gamut of choices. And that also led to the use and throw culture, right? That I buy something, I use it for. Pehle aisa tha ki we would probably use it for a couple of months, couple of years, reuse those clothes again and again. Then the fast fashion fad came in. Value and now, 
there is a phase yes abhi ye phase wapas aa gaya hai ki apart from the value we've also started realizing that it is not ecologically sensitive to do that we are changing we have this awareness that uh, this use and throw culture is not good i believe that you've also been associated with sustainable fashion and conscious clothing of late see i'll tell you something very importantly we all have to understand that the requirement and the demand is less you know it's not mm -hmm. as much as what we felt there was and there's a certain realization that not that much is required you know so we can make less we can we don't have to run in this rat race and we don't have to work those extra hours and and we we can you know come back home enjoy our surrounding in and uh, which is a true form of luxury and and come back to work next way next day with a more evolved mind and produce less which is what i said first when we started this talk was you know the the mm -hmm. innovation and i think quality is key today right so i think that the new trend is going to be the trendless it's not going to be oh this is in trend and that is in trend it's going to be about the trendless it's going to flow everything is going to flow fluidly and i think that once we are all aware of it sustainability becomes a part of our system right so for you will not believe i uh, when we started work in july the first thing when i went to my atlea i said let's complete what we have all the leftover pieces and you know assistance have given some i commissioned you know all of it so the entire july end august september october back rohaniyat was a collection that i was working on for the past one and a half year but the lighter version of those outfits the grand outfits but the lighter version more wearable versions were mm -hmm. completely made out of all what was there in matlia the silks the cottons the embroidery this is actually a sustainable collection completely and i think that we've all got to be aware of what we have there's so many times when we are busy in this whole rat race there are so many fabrics and you know things that are just around us left not used and i think it's time for all of us to get a lot more conscious of our surrounding and definitely look into recycle and in fact recently there was a bride and something happened she was telling me you know my my nani saree is very beautiful and it's it's a woven silk saree woven in mm -hmm. 1930s but it maintained hair school you know all of that i encouraged her that you should wear it in fact my store was saying sir what are you doing you know the, and i said no i'll make you a nice <laughs> dupatta but i was like you know i just felt ki nahi it was so beautiful honestly because to me it had such a series of emotions and when i saw the saree i was like you know you must wear it so i think that i think there is a certain awareness and more and more conscious that every company and every designer or every company as well environmental friendly technology friendly and i think sustainable friendly is, is most important and where where fast fashion is concerned i think i won't say that that would ever go out because somebody we all do take on to it you know it is a yeah. it is a co existing uh, industry and, and you you really cannot say i mean i wouldn't say that oh it's it's not something that i don't go to because i think most of us do and i'm being honest on that and and i think that's not wrong as long as all whether it's a fast uh, uh, fashion or whether it is people like us who do a lot more bridal and couture or a lot of international designers i think for all of us we have to get sustainable uh, tea in our work and get sustainable conscious and uh, work towards it Well, Manish, what do you think the rest of us can do, the consumers, to ensure that we don't damage the environment in our quest for being fashionable? Because this is what you would do. What can we do? Well, I think, well, I think the consumers are very, very, um, very, very aware. And I, and as I mentioned, that the true trend is going to be trendless, and the true luxury is going to be be yourself and enjoy something that's called life. So you want to wear a T-shirt and you want to go out for a dinner. and and you want to just pair it up with a different kind of sneaker do it you know and it is something wrong. i actually went i was recently had gone out of town and i bought a pair of shoes which i really like the women shoes but they they just mm -hmm. looked so good and it's not that and they look like it's a, it's it's a man shoe and it when i wore them i liked them and like when i when i walked in them and i bought them 
I don't think that's something I would do probably even two, three years ago, but today I'm doing it. I wouldn't even wear a striped jacket and I'm doing it, right? So I'm just saying that <laughs> I think we're all changing. And I think that today um, a lot of people are self styled, they're self aware, and, and they they just want to do what they want to do and, and want to wear what they want to be. I mean, I could so check a couple of years back, I could make a wedding leg, can you just sneakers pen? But today, so many mm. brides after two hours are wearing sneakers under their, you know, uh, lenga and nobody in the family yeah. was saying, oh my God, what are you doing? Right. So I think there is such a, um, such a, such a, um, confidence and a certain, uh, you know, wellness, awareness that's come in people that people want to be themselves. And I think everybody's going to sort of style themselves, mix their older things with new things, maybe wear a, you know, grandpa's jacket with your own contemporary t-shirt today and look cool and feel cool. The oversize is in fashion. I am. Yeah, it is. And I'm going to keep this in mind as soon as the session finishes, because I have to head to yeah, meet a couple of friends from our container. Huh. So what huh? Jaoge, pura, this is what I'm going to do. I don't say mix, karoge, of course. That's so, that's so much <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure there's going to be something interesting. I'm definitely going to send you a picture of what I tried. Uh, Manish, but uh, this is about what I'm going to do with my wardrobe. Men and women all across the world, they dream of wearing your clothes someday. And they must have this question. What is next for Manish Malhotra? Oh my God, what is next for Manish Malhotra? So much. So first of all, Bhavish there's Manish. a lot of... No, first of all, I mean, not to sound, you know, to that. I mean, that's that was something that I'm truly working on with my companies to adapt a lot more technology. Uh, you know, in your work as we progress the new techniques that are coming in, whether it is all about your embroidery and your craft, and not only that, but even in your day to day experiences at the stores and all of that, right. And for example, today, we are having our zoom chats, we are also I'm having zoom bridal conversations and, and a lot more ah. way of reaching out to the client, whether it is our e commerce, whether it is a virtual, uh, you know, videos of our stores and what people can see. So adapting technology, of being a, a brand which is very sustainable and environmentally conscious um, and, uh, and realizing that it, it is a lot more about lesser and a lot more about, uh, I would say, quality over quantity. And I think that for me, I definitely, definitely want to now, after 30 years of working, fulfill a dream that my life started with and which was movies. I definitely, definitely want to curate, create back young talent and um and get into the world of cinema and make films as well you know and um and i think oh, that wow. fashion and clothes and movies are two parts of my life and um of course there are a lot of new interesting and exciting verticals like makeup uh jewelry and and home and all of that so while i satisfy my urge in the verticals and clothes and work on more conscious collections i definitely now also want to take that plunge into something that I've dreamt for so many years, and that's movies. And um, and I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who loves to back new, even for the, the fashion films that we shot. You know, recently we shot fashion films, mm -hmm. one for Lakhna Fashion Week and one for Indo Kuchor Week. I went to artists who were relatively new, but fabulous, whether that's Abhi Sampa or there's Jasleen Olak. And I used their voices and their voices were so, uh, enriching and a lot of people ask me who is this singer and you know so I'm, I'm i want to back interesting talent i want to work with a lot more people who are out there and so fabulously talented and for me that's my world that's my life whether it is fashion and it's films and it all comes from my heart and and that's something that i absolutely adore and agree and i can do it for 48 hours and 24 hours <laughs> I wish we all had that passion for whatever we are doing as you do, Manish, for your work. Uh, I'm really looking forward to all of this because that will be, so to say, Iknaya Ayam, a new dimension to the Manish that we know already. Bahut difficulties aengi, bahut hoga. We might fail, but you know, I, I'm ready to. I, I never fear uh, failing at something because I think it's that's also a part of life. You fail, you wake up the next day and say, okay, come on, I have to, you know, strive that again. So I'm looking forward to it myself. Very, very excited. All the very best for that, Manish. Well, you have our wishes with you, uh, with you and also all our guests who are watching out there. Thank you.
Well, one of our guests has a question for you, Manish, uh, if that's all right, if I can like patch her in into this. Uh, her name is Kirtana S. Kumar. And Kirtana, uh, Kirtana uh, if, yes, if you could just unmute your mic and uh, then you can go ahead with your question. Hello, sir. First of all, it's an honor to be talking to you. Oh, thank you so much. How nice to meet you. Uh, thank you, you have a lovely so much. Smile. Uh, sorry? You have a lovely smile. Thank you, you so have a much. Lovely smile. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, my well, sustainability is a huge topic to talk about. But my question was uh, a very basic question. First of all, Everybody feels sustainable clothing is much costlier than the other normal clothing that we have. So could you please talk about that a little bit? And another question is, um, what's your view on this yarns that are being produced by plastic bottles? So there's like this new technology that's come up where they make yarns that's made out of old plastic bottles. So they recycle it, make it into fiber, and then they create yarns out of it and that's like the most sustainable clothing that people are talking about it's a hot topic right now so i just wanted to know your view on that well <laughs> like i mentioned earlier sorry excuse me like i mentioned earlier that it's sustainability is a part of our life and it is a part of something that every brand should be very conscious of i'm not so sure whether sustainable clothes are expensive i i, I mean i don't know on that because i wouldn't think that sustainable clothes are expensive because I mean, you're going mm -hmm. to use fabric, and you're going to use dyes, which are going to be a lot more durable and a lot more long lasting. That is the reason they're being called sustainable. Otherwise, if they're going to be expensive, then the entire purpose of sustainability is lost, right? So I'm not so but sure whether- Everybody thinks like uh, sustainably is prob sustainable shirts or t-shirts that all these, like it's because probably the higher brands are coming up with sustainable clothes now and hmm. the other more affordable clothing brands are still like going on with these like normal clothes with like normal cotton and stuff like that so everybody feels no. like sustainable clothing is probably higher no so if you would ask me if you would ask me as a, i can't speak about others but if i have to speak about myself so. uh, like i would call a collection sustainable if i'm also pricing it correctly you know it's not just okay. about oh I, i've kind of recycled everything and I've, you know, uh, I've, it's then I mean, the purpose somewhere I feel the purpose is lost because I feel when you are being sustainable conscious then your price also has to be otherwise the entire then otherwise it's just conversation. Otherwise, it doesn't really mean otherwise it doesn't really mean that, you know, the the, the target is achieved. So I agree with you. If it is expensive, it doesn't mean then it doesn't make sense. So it has to definitely be. But I understand that sometimes the weaves and the woven Hand woven, I'm not talking about power, I'm talking about hand woven. Yes. Is it takes time and the weaver it wants his, his due and his money. And I understand that. But that I'm sure even a client understands, right? But when you're speaking about a sustainable collection which is recycled or maybe which is uh, you know put together and which is all of that, that I don't think should be uh high price. So I uh, that I think would be a wrong this thing to um and whether with the plastic being used as uh, you know as a fiber, like you said, use of technology, I don't think there's anything wrong in that. I, I think that mm -hmm. the fact that this can be uh, you know used and it can be what should I say? What should the word be that if it can come into being used and come back into an entire circle of a garment, I think it's a, it's a it's a good uh, path, you know. And I think a lot of more. Uh, recycling and a lot more wasted should be recycled and if it can come into an industry like ours and people would want to take that garment i think it's a it's a completely um good move and it's in a good move in a good direction that's what mayang and me have been speaking about that what is the future then this is one of the important aspects of future and you know one thing is that these things are being done but what i'm happy about is that even people or like as you say the customers or people are looking for clothes are adapting to it. They are also for it. And I think that will encourage even more production because the client out there, because ultimately it is all about sale as well, right? You know, that's how do people sustain themselves? So I think that knowledge is also helping the client understand it and or a customer understand it and want to wear it. And I think that is the entire thing. But I agree with you, the pricing is key. Yes. 
<laughs> thank you so much. It was lovely. Thank you so much, Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Thank you so much, Kirtna. Manish, we have a couple more questions. Uh, I am going to take those on behalf of our guests. Uh, there is a Pura Sharma who asks, what is the percentage of local artisans working on major fashion weeks for, for you? Well, it depends because I'll tell you what, it's not just about a fashion week. So for example, when we work with Mifra, every year we do a very big fashion show where all the work mixed with the work that I do is, is uh, from the Mijma artisans. Regularly, if you see even my last collection, Taban, which was before Rahanid, a lot of the work was done by the Kashmiri artisans. Now, because these two um, verticals have become a part of my day-to-day -day work as well. So we continuously work with them. It's not that we work with them only for collection. Sometimes in Fashion Week, those are the collections which are a part of it. And sometimes they are not. Sometimes there's another collection which is a part of it. But if you come to my mm -hmm. stores, that Hyderabad, Mumbai, do you, or you go to my website, you'll see a lot of Kashmir and you'll see a lot of Mishwa. You'll see like, for example, in January, I'm coming out with this completely, uh, it's called the Katputli, um, you know, hand woven silk and cotton silk. Uh, so the figuratives are hand woven and that. And uh, that's something that we worked on for the past one year. And now we will come out with that collection. So I think there's a whole ongoing process that continues with it. Well, Apurva, I hope that uh, answers your question. Uh, we have another question from uh, Dharmesh. Sorry, this is from God of Singla. If you had to recreate a designer collection, whose design would you be inspired from? In movies, I would love to do something that Banuji did. We lost Banuji recently. Banu Ataya, who's been an Oscar award winner and a costume designer mm -hmm. whose work I truly admired, whether you see guide whether you see Amrapali, you see so many of her work which has been very very phenomenal in fact gandhi richard attenborough's gandhi and so many of her films and her work uh, alexandra mcqueen is another designer who we've lost but I, I absolutely love love their work and the fact that the brand still continues and does some amazing work speaks a lot about companies coming together and keeping the you know the designer and the brand alive um recently i heard that the late bendel Rodericks and his brand is also going to be, uh, you know, kept alive. And I was very touched by that when I heard that. Um, and I said, that's a good thing that today designer's work is going to be kept alive. I think for me, more than any designer, I think it's a lot of the heritage and a lot of the old world, the old world nostalgic fashions and, you know, fashion and trends that were there at that time, whether it's the hair, whether it's the makeup, whether it's the jewelry, I, I would love to keep that alive constantly, even the music. You know, for me, it's an entire whole uh, universe of all of it. So I would continuously and forever like to keep it alive, continuously coming back to doing and reviving some of the old forms of design and fashion. I can see and that Indian, coming up in your Indian, future work. And Indian fashion, yeah. Yes. I mean, Indian fashion and Indian heritage. Manish. Really high. Manish, we have uh, Ananya with us online who also wants to ask you a question. Ananya, please go ahead. Please uh, remember to unmute your mic. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Oh, I am Ananya hi. from Ahmedabad. Hi. Uh, I wanted hi. to ask you a question that you made your debut in Bollywood as a designer in the movie Swarg, uh, where you designed Juhi Chavla's outfit. I have the picture for your reference. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, <okay. laughs> and uh, given that that if you have to design the same character's outfit uh, today what would be the major change that uh, you will do in the outfit though i can see mm. the bell sleeves are still in uh, trend <laughs> well you know when you when you make something for a film and then let me explain to you there's a lot of requirement which comes from the director, the location, the song, the music, the dance beats, day hair, night hair, what is it, you know? So it will also depend. I'm sure today's people will say, make it more sexier and uh, make it more wilder. So I don't know. I mean, it will depend on the character and the, and the whole brief that I would get. But um, maybe I would definitely work a lot more on the fit and maybe on the, that was my first costume. Where I, and, and so. Uh, so I think a lot more contemporaneous of today would come into it. 
it's it's still it 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 still was very amazing <laughs> thank you so much thank you love you uh, love your work sir thank you thank you so who's prompting you in the background <laughs> yeah <laughs> the millennials yeah, that's my the sister hi hi hello we love you we love you absolutely thank love you thank you so <laughs> much thank you so these are the gen z what is it called the generation z right gen z gen yeah. z I, i've, I've lost there. count now i've, I've lost yeah. i've lost track of Listen, the generation who belongs to anymore who you like i i but i'm far from gen z but what i feel good me and ananya that it's all the gen z people who i work with and i even party with i understand them um they like my work and uh, so makes me feel gen z at 54 <laughs> you are and I've been, I've, oh thank you you are looking like you're gen z not kidding yeah. oh, thank you you're yeah. younger than most of us <laughs> It's the lighting. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you very thank much. You, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you, Ananya, and uh, the sister whose name we didn't get. And Manish, as I told you, yes, you are growing younger every year. Was Hami a bad nasib? Jo older ho ke ja rahe. Ab same lagte ho. Well, thank you so much, Manish. You've told us so much about the codes of luxury, about fashion, about so much more. That fashion is not just about clothes. And uh, if I had to be honest, I would say that the luxury, the pleasure, is all ours. that you were here to join us on this conversation face to face uh, across the screen so but hopefully some day we shall meet again of and course. thank you so much for being All part of the together. final yeah. session thank you so much yes. it's been my pleasure how do you better listen thank you so much for getting me here and future is an attitude worth having absolutely thank you so much manish see you very very you, soon dear. thank you Bye bye. Well, as long as the future is being crafted by people like Manish Malhotra, I'm sure it's going to be a beautiful one. And with that, we come to the end of the Visionarium 2020. It has been an amazing five days, from Virat's ideas about fitness and leadership to Baman's ideas of creativity, from what Chef Sanjeev Kapoor had to say, what Shankar Mahadevan had to share. and what manish shared with us today we've had a whirlwind of a session haven't we and i know that i will be leaving it a better man a changed man i sincerely hope that the same has happened with you that you have found the visions of the future inspiring and energizing enough to shape your actions for some of you let me tell you this that the near future is looking very bright indeed as the best questions today will be getting special giveaways from audi india and of course we would like to hear what you felt about today's session and of course the other four sessions as well write to at us at info@audiindia.in and uh, as i said before all the screenshots all the pictures all the videos as we saw that you have taken please post on social media don't forget to tag audi india and uh, use the hashtag audi visionarium thank you all for joining us for this very first of many editions of visionarium it's been a happy ending to an otherwise challenging year see you all again for the next edition of audi visionarium till then remember keep moving forward take care and may the force be with you